What is up folks, Stephen here from Moving to Canada and it is time for our first ever monthly immigration news roundup. So let's unpack it. Yes, today we are going to fill you in on all the latest immigration news over the past month. Now we have never done this before and we would love to hear your feedback about it down in the comment section of this video. So let us know if you would like to see more of these kind of videos in the future. Also, we want you to know that we listen to you folks and that you've told us that you want to keep the analysis in the Express Entry videos, so they will be coming back. If you want to make sure you don't miss out on them or any of the new content that we are creating, all you have to do is hit that little subscribe button below this video. These videos take a lot of time and effort, so your support shows us that you want to keep them coming. First off, let's talk about Express Entry. We've had three draws during the month of February two PMP draws and an FSW draw, which means no one was invited under the Canadian Experience class. Great. IRCC also has introduced an application tracker for Express Entry, which will allow candidates and representatives to view the history of their Express Entry applications, as well as to check application status, any next steps that need to be taken, IRC's progress with an application, and a timeline of an application history. What it won't allow you to do is get a straightforward answer from anyone in government as to what is going on in Express Entry. Also in Express Entry news, just yesterday the Parliamentary Budget Office released a report estimating that IRCC is actually overstaffed with 65% more staff than needed to meet IRCC's target of processing 80% of all Express Entry applicants within six months. Now the report also goes on to say that if immigration continues to grow at its current rate, that number for overstaffing will drop to just 4% come 2027. And more importantly for the short term, IRCC expects to meet their goal of welcoming 82,880 applicants to Canada under the Express Entry system in 2023. So what does this mean for you, I hear you ask? Well, while we all know Express Entry draws have been a bit unpredictable as of late, this shows that when draws do start ramping up, whether through all program draws or targeted express entry draws, you might want to consider being ready with all the documents you need to submit, because it looks like IRCC will be hitting the ground running. And then it seems in the future you may be eligible for an LMIA exempt work permit if you worked in a skilled position at Lululemon. IRCC issued this release saying that through the federal government's agreement with British Columbia, highly skilled occupations at Lululemon may be able to hire foreign workers without needing an LMIA. Back in 2016, Lululemon appealed to the federal government, warning the multi-million dollar company would leave Vancouver if something wasn't done about the temporary foreign worker program process. IRCC says more details of this plans are expected to be coming later this spring, which makes me think that the only way to get IRCC to respond to a message is to threaten their ability to buy their high-waisted line leggings. Next up, citizenship. Would you want to skip the citizenship ceremony and swear the oath on your phone? In the same month that we learned from the Institute for Canadian Citizenship that the amount of permanent residents getting citizenship has dropped 40% over the last 20 years, Canada started seeking consultations on a controversial new approach to swearing the oath. A plan published in the Canadian Gazette laid the groundwork for a new citizenship process that would allow permanent residents to take the oath on their own without needing a citizenship judge. As it is now, you need to swear the oath of citizenship before a judge at a citizenship ceremony. You can attend the ceremony in person or do it virtually. A lot of people call it a significant occasion as it takes a long time and a lot of work to become a naturalized Canadian citizen. But then you get all the benefits of Canadian citizenship. Ceremonies happen primarily on weekdays, during work hours and occasionally on Saturdays. IRCC says that can mean people need to take time off work to attend ceremonies, and this time off is not necessarily paid for by employers. The proposed change to allow people to take the oath at any time is an effort to reduce citizenship processing times and is also part of a broader modernization effort at IRCC. According to the Gazette, the change is expected to reduce the current processing times by three months to just 21 months. Now, the critics are saying that the change would actually cheapen the value of citizenship, Instead of a ceremony, people would just log on the internet and complete the process. But why not let us know your thoughts down in the comment section of this video. And finally, 
Pearson will soon be a third English language test option for new immigrants to Canada seeking permanent residence. I sat down for an interview to talk through what we can expect to see in the future. Here, my name is Marlene Olsavsky. I am the Senior Vice President of Pearson International Businesses. And Marlene, what is uh, this new English proficiency test that we're hearing about? The PTE essential exam, I believe, yeah? And it's a computer-based test of English language proficiency um, that'll be used for people who need to demonstrate language proficiency for Canadian immigration purposes. So Marlene, how does the PG Essential differ from other English proficiency tests that are available already? What we like to say about our test is that it's convenient, it's fair, and it's stress-free. Um, it's a fully digital test that can be taken in one of Pearson's test centers around the world. It can be booked as soon as 24 hours in advance, which is unlike other tests, um, and it only takes two hours to complete. The test is fully computer-based, um, which removes the stress of face-to-face -face testing by a proctor in a live environment. And the scoring is quite unique. It's scored by AI technology. Um, and as such, the scores are being are able to be returned very quickly within one, one and a half days um, on average is when we get the scores back to the test takers. Um, and the AI technology is based on tens of thousands of real world data points. Um, we've been delivering this test for quite some time and it allows PTE to match the expertise and accuracy of a human examiner, um, but with the precision and consistency and objectivity of machine learning. So that doesn't introduce any bias into the scoring process, which can be a possibility with a human examiner. We received a press release uh, from, from you folks, and in it there was a mention of the language being geared towards a Canadian market, as opposed to a British or an Australian style English. And I'm curious, how will this affect the testing proficiency of, of just the English language? Um, what, what is the Canadian market, I suppose, is, is the ultimate question. Yeah, I, th I think just to unpack that a bit, every, every country that designates language proficiency has certain requirements you need to make um, to meet in order to get your test approved. And in Canada, there are specific language benchmarks that we need to be able to achieve. And so I think that's really what the press release is getting at. In order to make this text accessible for the Canadian market, um, it had to be approved by the Canadian government. And as such, they, they had a rigorous process. We went through a rigorous process with the IRCC to get this test approved. There was a panel of language experts that reviewed the test and gave us some feedback. And then um, back and forth, we were able to make the test specifically meet the needs of the Canadian requirements that are set forth by the government. Would that mean that we're not expecting to know all the Canadian colloquialisms like toke and or took I believe and, and loony and toony and all these little kind of slang words uh, it's still testing English proficiency but it's what the Canadian government deem as this is the English we want in this country kind of thing. You don't have to worry about having to know all the Canadian colloquialisms in fact <laughs> one of the requirements from the Canadian government is that we don't do that because we know that um, um, people from around the world aren't familiar with um, such jargon. So, so yes, you can expect to take a test that um, if you're coming from an overseas um, place to come to Canada, you can expect to take a test that you can understand and complete. This brings me on to my next point, which uh, is that a lot of us out there who don't speak American or yeah, North American style English, say, or, or, or British UK English with a certain tonality of accent might have had horror stories when it comes to things like Siri, Alexa, or other voice recognition software. Um, what kind of accuracy rate or, or bugs, or is, do we need to be afraid, I suppose, with regard to accent or dialect or tonality uh, with the AI technology that's in place? I think the AI technology is designed, and the reason we chose to use AI technology for our test, it's designed to mitigate those risks. Um, PTE was the first completely computer-based high stakes English exam on the market. And we've used sophisticated algorithms based on tens of thousands of real world data sets and data points to score each test and voice recognition technology to recognize the very different accents and dialects within those accents from around the world for the, for the test takers. Um, and again, this, this sophisticated combination of AI and voice recognition really allows us to match the expertise and the accuracy um, of a human examiner. I would say it's even more accurate because human examiners can't recognize um, all of those different accents and dialects and, and, and the way an AI-powered machine can. 
Um, so, you know, we really pride ourselves on having precision, consistency, and object objectivity in machine learning. And it's all because of the power of these wonderful technologies in the background. Marlene, thank you so much for sitting down with us today. We really appreciate your time. Um, yeah, and we'll be, we'll be looking forward to seeing those tests uh, become live in 2023, at the end of 2023. And that is it, a roundup of Canadian immigration news. It's a new thing that we're trying, so let us know what you think in the comments and show some love by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. If you do want to read the full articles about everything we talked about today, I will, of course, link to them in the description of this video. Until next time.